But it ended up clearing just in time for me to write checks and for payroll and pay rent. And I was like, wow, okay. You know, like I'm supposed to keep on doing this. At times we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Can you guys let us know what your favorite memory is? If you ever came to liberate Hollywood, like we just love to see that in the comments, like your favorite yeah. standout memory of that. Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today is kind of a blast for the past. We are experiencing a lot of retrogrades. And so we thought that we would do a uh, kind of like a reflection uh, podcast about liberate Hollywood, the w- events and circumstances that happened there, the closure of it, and the new beginning that we have with Liberate Sherman Oaks. So the left and the right hand here is Rebecca and Ellie that have been, you know, they really kind of uh, are the glue that's been holding both Liberate Hollywood and then this new venture together. So um, taking uh, roles of managing and event coordinating and, and media and, you know, so pretty much everything you see and experience through these places have been created or booked through these two individuals. So, yes. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Yay. Why was it so awkward? Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mercury is so retrograde right now. And I was like, how do we work with this energy? And I'm like, let's just talk about old stuff, you know, Um, because the yeah, like there's been a lot that's happened, you know, and I thought maybe people would be curious, too. So like all the guests that are booked on the podcast for Mercury Retrograde are like all people that have been on it before. Yeah. So like I remember when I started working at Emporium in Los Feliz and I remember Christina was like, we're going to open a Hollywood location. And I was like, Oh my God, it's amazing. And I had no concept of how much bigger it was going to be. Like it was was so much bigger. It was like literally like a, like the biggest leap of all time. I think in my mind, like that's how I see it as like, um, you know, it was like uh, not like, okay, we're growing to the next level. It was like shooting up like a hundred levels up Um, just because well for all kinds of reasons actually but just like the amount of stuff we had going on and like the the big vision that you had so I don't know Christina like how did Hollywood all get started like how did that seed spark in your mind and like germinate and yeah well you know there's an interesting story that goes with it so I had I had come off of um being sick and recovering from really bad mold poisoning, like dehabilitating like uh, level where I was had to go on like medical detox and, and, and prescription meds, which I don't even like to touch that stuff for six months and get my liver tested every couple, um, like every week or something like that to make sure I was okay. And I had abandoned a tech project uh, in company that I had prior to that because I got so sick that I couldn't even drive a car so I actually sold my car I mean it was it got that bad and so I was spending a lot of time at Emporium again and then the previous few years I had spent hardly any time at Emporium again or or any time at Emporium period I was like half the time I was in Chicago because that was where my tech company was based and like you know so I wasn't even here and so um with that being said, I got a lot of healing. It brought me back to connection. It brought me back to like what's important because I think my little ego was getting big as I was building this like travel social networking uh, site and I was getting a lot of attention for it and things along those lines, working with the founder of Priceline and stuff like that. And it was just like, pop, and then you're gonna be sick and you won't be able to think and we're, you're gonna get diagnosed with early Alzheimer's, which is what the neurologist thought I had until they realized the mold. So after all of that happened, I started to, for the first time, I never looked at Emporium as a business. 
um, at all. Like I never really ran it as a business, never looked at it as a business, but I had spent so much time thinking about, you know, global business that when I came back and I was like also seeing what difference it made in my life, I was like, oh, you know, I wanna do something more with this space and I wanna make it grow. Well, uh, I had gotten approached by one of my vendors to do a three-way partnership with a Silicon Valley guy um, to buy out East West Bookstore in Silicon Valley. And that partnership, we were, you know, I was working and it was like gonna be like the wholesale crystal vendor. And then I was gonna kind of run like the day-to-day and like set it up and uh, have it be like a, a Liberate Emporium. And then we had the Silicon Tech investor coming in. So then we could do some, you know, bigger plays with it. And uh, it was like, for all intents and purposes, like the Bodhi tree of Silicon Valley. So it had been there for many years, it was for sale. And we actually all came to an agreement as a partnership and uh, um, he was, uh, the Silicon Valley investor was putting in the, um, the money to purchase the business and then we were gonna do the infrastructure and I was putting in a little bit and so was the other partner. And it was all supposed to go through. Uh, everything they were supposed to accept our offer and the the Silicon Valley investor had went and checked on it um, on Saturday. They said, yeah, 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 we should accept it all on Monday. And this was about six months of planning. Like, and this was a lot bigger space, it was 6,000 square feet. Um, I just want you to hear the similarity. So 6,000 square feet is a bigger space, bigger venture, all this different stuff. It would have a lot of workshops and classes. And so, um, also through that, you know, the tech investor didn't have, didn't really want to be involved in the day to day. And then the crystal vendor had no basis of understanding what a brick and mortar did, you know, and how it operated. So I felt like I was really pulling the weight on a lot of the planning and the, and the vision and all of that. And on Sunday, so going back, sorry, to on that sat or that Saturday, he had went by, checked on it, said they were going to accept the offer on Monday. Sunday, they reached out and said that they had gotten some mystery offer that, like, I, I still don't believe to this day that they ever got. I think they were just trying to get more money out of us, and because they hadn't had offers for like months when it was on the market and wanted us to know if we wanted a counter. And at that point I said, no, I was like, it was like an old dying brand, you know, that we were rehabilitating. Like it wasn't worth it. Everything needed to be redone. All the inventory was like decades old. Like it didn't make sense. I said, we're better off starting our own new one, Mm -hmm. right? From scratch. And so when I got that news, I got really kind of upset by it. And one of the girls that I play soccer with, that's actually a good friend of mine, she was like, don't be upset, you know, like, why don't we see, and this was like on a Sunday, right? Why don't, you know, because I was like, we decided that we weren't going to counter on that Sunday or whatever. And she said, like, why don't you start looking for what else? And maybe you can do your own and do another version of Liberate in Los Angeles and yada, yada, yada. You've been doing all this planning. So she went around and started looking online for places for lease. And she was like, oh my God this building, I used to have a recording studio in it and blah, 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 and it's right down the street, it's in Hollywood, and and she sent me the listing and I was like, I don't know, like, why don't you see if it's even zoned for retail, you know? And and I was like, and I'm not gonna deal with the listing agent, if you know them, say contact the landlord and see. And so she contacted him and out of like freaking fate, uh, he ends up, being getting off of a plane that Monday in Los Angeles, even though he lives out of state, and said, do you want to meet that night? So Monday after soccer, we went to look at this place. This happened in two, three days, right? Saturday is supposed to accept, Sunday it falls through, Monday I'm looking at a new place by myself, right? And I walked through it and I'm like, I don't have, I don't have the resource. I, and I thought that I could convince them to do the partnership with me, but he really wanted to do one in Silicon Valley. The other person didn't really have the capital to put in. And so then I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe let me figure it out. So the landlord of the Hollywood location was like, well, we might reju- revitalize like this music history with my dad. So I'm talking to Warner Brothers right now and I'm going to be back in six weeks. So why don't you see if you can put together a business plan. Cause I had, I was like, I was honest. I was like, I hadn't even thought about this. I was gonna do a different venture, you know? And I was like, this just kind of happened. And he was like, well, maybe it's meant to be and yada, yada, yada. And uh, so then I was really feeling, especially since I was so in that divine fate 
and trust. And I was out, I was coming out of, uh, of being sick and like getting my brain back and all of these other things that happened. And I was like, maybe that I was like the coincidence, this place was 6,500 square feet. That the other one was 6,000. I was like, this just happened like so seamlessly. And so for six weeks, I was like, okay, let me figure this out. And if I put a place here, how is it going to be? And then before you know it, six weeks later, I'm signing a lease. <laughs> and, and wait, wait, wait. <laughs> how big, how many square feet is Emporium? Just like, because I don't. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Emporium is about 800 square feet, 800, 900. Right. Just so, so people that? can have that, yeah. that like see the contrast. Wow. Wow. And yeah. yeah and so Sorry, like, I, I didn't, I didn't really, I jumped with faith. And then, you know, looking back now, I can see how everything, I mean, I went through more crap. I don't know if we can swear. I think I swear on other podcasts, so it's probably okay. But I, I went through more crap with that location than I think most people do in their whole life. Like the problems, the, the, the like fighting against, like even the, the, the littlest thing to make happen was so difficult but yet it was so weird because it was so easy to just get the place. It was like almost like like God or the universe was like, here's this place and it's like, it, you got led to this, you know? And the whole time I was thinking, oh, it's gonna take a couple months to put up, put together and then I'll be back to my tech venture. Like, you know, I wasn't thinking that, you know, four and a half years later, I'd still be like battling with it, like barely like sleeping. <laughs> Oh. oh lord keep keep talking like tell us more like yeah so so then then the problem started to happen uh from kind of like day two of construction really like it was just um we we agreed that the landlord would put in a window because it was this old brick building. He brought a person to put in a window. I brought a contract or um, uh, architect over because I wanted to put in a juice bar. I had disclosed this. The architect sees that he's just blasting a hole in the wall of a masonry building and not reinforcing it and says, what are you doing? You need to permit this. We're gonna have city inspectors come in for the juice bar. And that was the start of complications. Uh, let's say three years later, we just got a window. <laughs> right. Actually, let me just, because I'm, I'm realizing as you're talking to, I'm like, keep talking. But I'm like, some people might not know. So if you're listening to this, like, I'm sure you have heard other episodes likely of the podcast, because this is like not a topic you'd be searching for. I right? just like reflections on Liberate Hollywood. But maybe you've like seen the shop or you've been to the shop or you're like familiar with us and it seems like this magical place and it is a magical place like it's it's amazing like the magic that has been in Hollywood is just it's amazing and through any of the liberates really like um but like any any of the staff members that have worked there and the facilitators that have come through like and just people that are like in our family you know like we know that there's been like just a lot of struggle <laughs> Like through through that, so I just want to like we we talk about that like as if everybody knows like it's a known thing, <laughs> yeah. but like, like people oh, might yeah. not really know. <laughs> well, yeah. you, you know the funny thing is that's like kind of how Emporium had been. I lucked out, you know. Um, I think we had Emporium maybe like seven years before Hollywood came about, and there wasn't really ever problems with it. You know, it was easy. It was this ball of light, magic just happened. And it's not that Liberate Hollywood wasn't that, but I say that it was definitely a lesson in growth, a lesson in boundaries, and in understanding a little bit more of the massive dynamics of the physical world mixed with the metaphysical world, right? And I say that because you know, we were putting a lighthouse in the center of darkness. And that's the only thing that I can really do, like wrap my head around because the amount of things that went wrong, like aren't even statistically possible. Like, you know, it, 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 it's, it's like, but you know, a little baseline on it for those that had never been, or even if you had been, you might not know this fact, um, liberate Hollywood 
was on the ley line of the very center point of Hollywood. Longitudinally and latitudinally, smack dab in the middle. If you dropped a pin on a map, it would land on top of the building. Well, that's interesting for the people in the metaphysical world of thinking about vortexes and energy centers and all this different stuff. Well, you know, it was also a famous recording studio where I think of roughly around 1,400 gold and platinum records have been recorded there. But most of the people... By pe- artists like... By artists like... Names here yeah, Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, The Doors, Earth, Wind, and Fire... Um, among yeah, Ross, Di- yeah. yeah, so like many. every famous, like most famous musician that's iconic of all time, cut a major record there. So it was a really famous, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really big deal. <laughs> yeah, no, so it's a very famous recording studio, but it was also like a lot of those artists died young or suffered a lot, you know. And I wonder, you know where that dynamic of there's like kind of that saying when you go to Hollywood do you sell your soul to the devil you know kind of thing and I all I know is going through some of the experiences we've had we had Buddhist monks shamans priests um different people come in and cleanse that space do different things and they all said the same thing <laughs> they all said that you know there there was some energy that needed to get cleared out and that there was some dark forces and you know it was like over and over it felt like you could literally play a repeat and these were people from like all over the world right and some of the highest disciples and people and they would they, they said the same shit you know and so it was like okay so we were battling this let's just call it an energetic vortex but if we you know Maybe we were called there. Maybe we helped shift energy in Hollywood. Maybe it was just so that we could grow as individuals and a company going through lots of friction. Um, But there was also so many magical moments, right? You know, there was like these blessings that came out of thin air. Like, I mean, when we talk about all the problems and the chaos, there was just as much like angelic forces around and these incidences what i have to say is liberate hollywood was filled with metaphysical phenomena all the way around completely Mm -hmm. i mean there was even one time i mean because because of the lawsuits with the landlord and because of some other other problems that we had and trying to get the window open, all the delays, right? And the floors. The floors and never could get done. And I mean, there's a million things, right? But, you know, we were struggling financially to even try to catch up and along like, you know, we had loans upon loans out on the business that we were just trying to take out loans to pay other loans and hope that we could build the business too. And had we not had so much mounds of debt, we probably would have been able to you know, grow better, but we, you know, we were starting at such a deficit. It took us six months to even open the doors, you know, and then it- Also, your overhead was insane. Yeah, the overhead was insane. The amount of money it cost to be open at all with rent and bills and everything was like astronomical. Like more than whatever listeners, like whatever you're thinking it was, like it's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that we, we, we in, in labor and overhead, we spent probably over 50 grand a month and just to keep the lights on. Right. You know, and so that's for a metaphysical store. That's a lot, you know, and and if you add in all the loans and the debt and then fighting a lawsuit and all of these other like adding of expenses energetic things too. and then the energetic things but there was a you know just to give one story of something that was good to give people like you know um level of there's magic there i was like okay i was fed up i i was like i was trying to get a couple more loans i didn't know what i was gonna do you know we were twenty five thousand dollars short in payroll and in uh rent and I got denied a couple loans in a row because of the debt to credit ratio. I was like, oh my God, we're fucked. And I remember I was so stressed. And I, I was like, I don't know. I think we had a staff meeting. And I was like, I don't know if we can continue. Like, this is just where we're at, you know? And I was coming to terms with it. And I remember having a prayer. And uh, I must have prayer, prayed maybe on a Monday, let's just say, like, figuratively, it was like a five-day spread, so I'm just going to push this out th- there, but 
I don't know if it was a Monday or a Saturday or what it was, but there was less than a week for rent and payroll to be due. And I got on my knees and I was just like, I feel like this was divinely orchestrated for me to do this. I could have had more success just following my tech career and doing other projects. I like listened, I took a leap, I did all of these things. And God, if you want this to be done and it's just a lesson for me of detachment, I hear you and I will walk away and I'll learn the process of releasing, building something to just have it crumble. And if this is meant to continue, I need a miracle because I don't know how I'm going to pay rent and I don't know how I'm going to pay payroll, Mm -hmm. right? Five days, five days, right? I had met, somebody had introduced me to a potential possible investor and, but we only had one meeting and didn't really talk anything business, was more of like a meet greet, went away, they lived in Chicago and wasn't planning to see them or anything. And two days later, my phone's ringing, 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 ringing. It's like nine o'clock at night. And I'm still at the shop because, you know, I'm like kind of grieving that I'm going to let it go in a week. <laughs> and, and so so um, I, I answered the phone. It was a 213 number. And the person's like, hey, are you at your center? And I said, yeah, you know, like I am. And um, him and his business partner ended up coming. And again, I didn't even really know these people, right? And we walk upstairs and we sit down and we have a conversation and he hands me a check pre-written out <laughs> for $25,000 and said something told me you needed this. We either work out a deal or we don't. And if we don't consider it a gift, like what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, and and I was like, well, okay, God, I hear you. So I'm supposed to still keep on going with this train, <laughs> you know, and the headaches. But those those levels of fate that, I mean, like, you literally can't write that. Like, I mean, I could have him on and we yeah. could interview on that. Now he's a friend of mine. But, like, that at that point, there was no contract. There was no basis of a partnership. Like, yet, you, you know what I'm saying? It was like, it was a miracle mm-hmm. in the right time. So that, that, but then let's get the timeline straight here. You had a few of those. <laughs> yeah, the check cash. And then and then like it, it was on hold for like a day and it cleared like in 2 days or whatever because they put they let some go and then because the, the count wasn't that high right that at that point if anybody knows and has that struggle sometimes you know you cash a bigger check mm-hmm. they put it on hold for a little bit but it ended up clearing just in time for me to write checks and for payroll and pay rent. And I was like, wow, okay. You know, like, I'm supposed to keep on doing this. And then I think part of me, because of there was many of those little nuggets that happened like that, nothing so profound as that, that where I was, like, done and, like, gave up. It was like, all right, I'm, I get you. I hear you, God. Like, uh, if this is a lesson or if I'm just supposed to continue. And, but having all of that it's been a really hard time for me to kind of reconcile with letting it go because I start to question in my mind that I did the wrong thing and I failed spiritually you enjoying this so far did you forget to subscribe make sure to do so takes two seconds just press that little button the red one you know the one just press it little like all right enjoy the rest of this content because there were so many of those beautiful tokens um, and it seemed like it was fate that it was meant to be. And I wonder, you know, had I continued and not got out of the lease to drop the lawsuit, if we would have still been there, if things would have turned out differently, um, even with COVID and everything like that, or you know, at a certain point enough was enough for me. I put my hands up and I was like, we had gotten uh we had gotten broken into uh, during the riots that happened during the summer of 2020. Um, and it was kind of like the coffin in the box. And I was still fighting this lawsuit and the lawsuit because of 
it was supposed to, I was already supposed to go in court with the landlord, but because of COVID, it got pushed a year back. And I was like, oh my God, another year of this. Plus, like, we can't even operate. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe I just need to get rid of it, right? Like, I just need to let go and move forward and walk away and just trust that whatever is meant for me in the future will be. But then I think back and I'm like, was it that supposed to happen? You know, like, did I did I turn my back on something that was divinely orchestrated to shift? Because now the irony of it is going and liberate Hollywood's place is the museum of death. that's right wow (laughs) which is it's like honestly in my opinion if we're not going to be there that's kind of a perfect thing to be in that building well it's a perfect thing based on the energy but if there was some kind of mission to shift the vortex of the negative it feels like we let the negative or the evil win in some way you know like it, it to me at least and I mean I know I need to get over that but it is a hard thing for me to swallow because it was like we battled so much to bring so much light there we even put like god what was it three four layers on that crystal floor and that museum of death I stopped by it they jackhammered my whole crystal floor up it's like you know like oh that hurts a little it hurts a lot it's very symbolic too right it's like pulling the death card in a in a tarot reading you know except it's your building and i like that does hurt you know but so many people lost so much in this pandemic and so much change and rebirth right it's funny because i just wanted to this is a question i've been that's been turning over in my head a lot of the time i know in the spiritual community if we um are really focused on like the power of co-creation and and how energy works and um, like bringing the light in and being taking responsibility for our energy and for um, our manifestations and all these types of things. And personally, like where I am, I think that's a thing, but I don't know if it's the only thing going on. And I just um, wonder if, if it, I suppose, how do I find a way to say this? I, I'm like, I'm all my Libra planets, like don't want to offend anybody, <laughs> but um, I don't know if we can, if it, there's sort of a victim blaming sometimes that can happen or if like something bad happens to you or um, in your life that you think that you, there's something wrong with you or that you are bad or you failed or like, um, and I, I would push back on that a little bit and say, uh, uh-uh. uh, like there is something greater spiritual at work going on where, um, this is like all, I say this all with humility. Like it's all a theory. I really ultimately like do not know, but I think there's some of both at play. Um, and so like, I just honor when I see everything that you went through, Christina, and like that we've all gone through, like I see so much light in it. And like, even in the quote unquote, like failure or like release of, of the business in that form, I see like, and, and feel like nothing but light and like nothing but love having come from that whole experience and seeing you rebirth it in this new location. It almost like it touches me so much because like I'm gone too. Like I'm way, I'm Canada so hard. I have like a beaver on my sweatshirt (laughs) right now. So I'm like, I miss, I miss liberate a lot too. So like I have all this sort of extra heart energy around it right now, but seeing you guys in this new location and I haven't even physically been present there, but it's like, Oh my God, nothing has been lost. Like nothing has been lost. And like when it first closed, like I was so sad, but that was before you opened the new one. And I'm like, everything has literally been like put in the cloud. It's like when your hard drive crashes and it's been like put in the cloud and then you're like downloading it into a new computer. That's what it's like in the new and like all of the most powerful um, uh, like light and information and codes or like whatever, however you want to like spiritually speak that shit like is all in the cloud and it's like getting downloaded into like the next operating system up. And so I don't mean to like be dismissive in any way about like the grief that you would feel from that building because it has been so special, but that's just like, I don't know. I would just, cause that's my contribution right now. Yeah, no. And I, I totally, I totally agree that, you know, it's always about looking at things and seeing um, where you've grown from 
everything and everything is happening for you, not to you. However, in that same breath where you say a little bit of this, a little bit of that, I mean, you see, you know, who's ever listening, you see people in your own life that they just keep on making the same fuck ups over and over again. And you're like, you know, at a certain level, you could say, say, if they just made a different choice, you know, like their life would be what they want it to be, or they would not have to suffer, or they would not, you know, have to go through whatever it is, you know, for some people that could be a different choice in the relationships that they have, that could be a different choice in maybe their health and how they take care of their self, that could be a different choice in you name it, their spending habits, right? But you see these repetitive patterns and you realize from a side, you know, and, and as like a therapist and like us as like, healers and helpers and 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 facilitators like you see that within the clients right and you can be like okay this is where you are but you also if you learn this you're going to behave differently or if you take this this there's this road and there's this road and there's this road and on some level you're right none of them are wrong right we're just a soul living in a journey but there's certain ones that are going to lead you to different places, right? You know, if you're if you're if you're driving north, you're going to end up in probably northern California, right? If you're driving west, you're going to hit the ocean, and if you're driving east, you're going to hit the desert. They're very different, right? And so, you know, it, it, just to say that you're going to end up in the same place is absolutely ludicrous. You know, you have very different. You have redwoods, you have ocean, and you have desert. That's three different climates right you know um and i think that that's a metaphor that's true of life right it's like where do your choices lead you and ultimately one story isn't better than than the next right you know until you learn to make it not unless there's some kind of ultimate desire that you want to experience within this human flesh incarnation right but the ocean is magical the desert's magical the redwoods are magical right you know like they all have different, very different experiences, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, Ellie, what do you want to Like, share? I can like, talk, I- but I'm trying to Mississippi my way into quiet right now so someone else can speak that hasn't talked yet. I mean, I don't know. What do you think about, you know, like, the transition of... Uh, of events, you know, because Rebecca was doing events over at Liberate Hollywood, and then Ellie took the torch on those for about probably the last year, right, or so before we yeah. closed. And so now, like taking the torch and, and leading it over here again with the events and stuff, but noticing the shifts, the changes. A lot of the practitioners and facilitators maybe are moved, but we're meeting new people. But like, mm-hmm. just what's your overall experience of that? Um. Well, just to liberate Hollywood as a whole, because I came in, what, a year after you opened? Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit less. Um, and I came in straight as a manager, because my old job, I was a manager. So I came in as a manager, thanks to a friend that was working at Liberate as well. And now she's stuck with us. <laughs> it was hard, because I also didn't have much like retail experience like overall. Um, I'm just really good at getting shit done, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> um, and I love organizing. So I was like, yeah, okay, this, this could work. I love crystals. I love spirituality. Um, all that good stuff. But I liked that I had room to grow starting as a manager, like managing the floor and just being in sales and then having the opportunity of like, hey, do you want to like step away from sales and do more manager slash event coordinators like Rebecca wants to do more media stuff and more like practitioner like healer reader and I was like yeah learning new skills like connecting with new people being able to like help the space grow too from a different perspective um not so like oh this has got to look this way because that really I'm not a visual person like that like marketing on the floor I was like oh my gosh how do I organize all these crystals all this inventory like it's just the everything in general so um shifting to that event coordinator also gave me the opportunity to like be better at my job and just help another way I guess um but the transition has been 
fun. I mean, most of the practitioners and facilitators that we had at Liberty Hollywood are so excited that we're opening again. Some of them live in the valley, so they're like, oh my God, now you're closer to me, and that's amazing. Like, we needed a space like this over here. Um, so it's nice to see how people from the past and Liberate family still comes around and it's just like, yeah, I want to do stuff at the new place. Like, let me help you. Like, we could do this and this and this. And it's just been fun. It's been nice. I love that you pointed out about the grow, like the room to grow. Because I didn't think about that, but that's such a key, like, theme. Mm -hmm. Because there was never any stagnation. Like, even though you said, Christina said, there's been a lot of friction and a lot of, like, you know, struggle and hurdles. Um, and like, not to digress, but we did, you did sign that contract on both of Venus and Mercury retrograde. So astrology people just let him not be known. <laughs> um, but so like that explains a lot. If you look through an astrological lens, you're like, uh-huh, like that was the vibe, right? But, um, <laughs> but yeah, there, there was a lot of room for growth and there was always growth and there was always flexibility and there was always stuff that's literally like a zillion moving pieces like at all times. But um, yeah, like I shuffled around and had a lot of different um, responsibilities um, and had my hands in different, different pots, I guess, or I'm not, that's not the right expression, but um, at different times. And so have you, Ellie, and so has everybody like we uh, and and that's what I, I loved about that is like, it's really wild to get that 360 degree view. Um, and like, there was just constant growth, constant growth, like it was never like, all right, like, we're gonna wait until everything's all together before we like start doing this new thing. It was always like, we're going over here. We're going to open over here. We're going to like open to this project. We're going to open to that project. Let's try this. Let's try that. And I think that's like a part of the magic because there was so much that we experienced in such a short period of time there. Like, I feel like what was it open like three years could have been like the amount of like shit that happened in three years would like take other places like a couple decades to have that much stuff happen right so well even the stuff uh, that would happen in one day like day to, like i'd be like like now it's 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 like i'm kind of like coping with this new like it feels like melancholy in a way or whatever if that's the right term i've just heard that term used before probably using it wrong but like i I'm like, things are starting to get a little busier, but I mean, isn't it like just like kind of more sleepy? And like, I just felt like there was- so <laughs> It's not that stressful. That's what it is. <laughs> like sometimes you walked into Liberate Hollywood and because it was a recording studio, it was very um, isolated from the outside world. So once you closed that front door, it was like you yeah. were in a totally, which was good and bad. Because let me tell you, closing that store <laughs> alone, having chance playing it's like get me out of here get me out of here immediately because where am i i'm in like in a different place and then you went out in the morning and it's like the sun oh my god it did feel like you walked into like a different world and for those that don't know like we would go ahead we would play like, can we actually reminisce on some of these details, right? Like, what is it like when you walk in to liberate, like, Hollywood, you know, in a day? Like, I remember, like, being on my computer, like, I had my candles lit and, like, my incense going, even though I'm, like, working on, like, whatever, right? And there's, like, someone in the room next door being, like, ha! Like, making, like, these crazy noises <laughs> for, like, sound healing or, like, vocal toning. And then, like, there's the ohm that you would put the ohm on all the time to clear the energy. That's what Ellie is talking about, right? So there, and it would just always be on. And, like, I am, a, I'm a musician, right? So, like, my sound sense is, like, ah, like, <laughs> and the ohm, like, just constantly. And I, and you're, like, it clears the energy. It's the best way to clear the energy. Right. And everybody over there was like obsessed with clearing energy because it was so intense. So like yeah. people would be like smudging, they'd have all their crystals. The floor was like full of crystals, like which that's also like super intense too, right? Like New York City is on like a bed of quartz, I remember hearing. And so like that's like the intensity of New York. It's like you you like voluntarily put that in the in you you like built that in or baked it in right but it's like there's like sage going and there's like people dinging bells and like but it was great anyway like I just remember walking in there and like being like 
grateful to be able to work in a place like it always felt like the chocolate factory to me like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory you know I was just like how wild is it that I'm like walking in here every day and like this is where I work but in in like a magical freaking fairy wonderland of like craziness but like the best craziness like Alice in Wonderland level craziness sometimes like just down these like rabbit holes you know but like magic like so but like it really was magical and we would always we had such a good community with all of the customers and the practitioners and people would sit around we built like a little thing on the rooftop that you could sit up there everybody would love their hoppe or you know oh sit in the, the circle like it it but there was always there, it felt like a day was like a week now like the things that happen in a week in my life now happened in one day there like you know It'd be like in one hour. Yeah, it was like I I just don't understand. Like I don't know one how how I had so much energy, you know, and two, the amount of different things would be running down and setting up a meditation for like eleven in the morning, then this, and then and then we have like a music thing was like going on at nine at night, and like all of these different things in between, and all of the different practitioners and the personalities and the things, and then we're constantly trying to do something different to bring in revenue. Yeah. Like, okay, let's make this the classroom. Okay, now it's gonna be made into a conference, a conference room. Hair salon. And- a hair salon, <laughs> which yeah. The hair salon, you had like, I swear to God, there were like six different times when you were like, we're doing a juice bar. And there'd be like, but like, then it wouldn't be a juice bar. And then it would be like something else. Like what else? Well, we actually built out the hair salon though. Like the hair salon existed there. For those that don't know, because nobody ever seen it. It was a pretty cool looking hair salon. (laughs) The selenite wall in the, in the Phoenix room. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, it was all selenite. We had a selenite wall. <sighs> There's so much love went into every detail. There's a lot of dysfunction in creating everything, but so much love. Like, even when we put the walls up for the treatment rooms for the practitioners, we liased them with crystals. But crystals and all inside the walls by, like, where the two-by-four framing is, there was crystals in it. Um, a lot of people don't know that or like in that Phoenix room which was the one that we used to always do like the sound baths and a lot of our bigger meditations that was downstairs uh, we hand cut um, well we like the contractor hand cut uh, uh, pieces of uh, four by four and I hand picked out the ones with the right like marbling in them so it was pink on one side and white on the other we dried them on the roof and we put them in as these hand done wood panels for the floor. And in between each one of them, we hammered in a crystal before we lacquered it. So it was a whole crystal grid. And and then, you know, like there was sacred geometry murals on like every wall. There was even like when you walked in, like there was this symbol that was meant the path of liberation and you walked into it and then there was a prosperity symbol right in the front and then we had our logo in the floor and then we made a two-person labyrinth in the floor and then we had the treble clef before you went into the phoenix room in the floor and the bathrooms had like crystal um floor stencils inside of them that were uh, made out of crystals that were like for gender neutral bathrooms and different things and then we had these birds flying in each direction to uh, represent like uh, all of the directions you know and it was just you know we put so much in it we had a reiki symbol in one of the rooms downstairs Mm -hmm. on the floor and 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 then you know it was just it there was so much potential there and so much love and I think maybe the potential there was all of the growth that we got out of it you know and the shifts and the changes Mm -hmm. and maybe ultimately we got the lesson that you know it's sometimes okay to let go of one thing and trust that whatever you gain from it is always going to be with you yeah there's like one last like thing that I keep forgetting to say and I like it's interesting with um liberate having had all this friction right like that you've mentioned and and all this growth right and evolution um and how like there's 
there can be, especially in the spiritual community, like this misconception that, well, if you're spiritual, like everything should be peaceful and like uh, there should never be any conflict or there should never be like any of that kind of thing. And I think people would often like um, be surprised that we would have like such intense unfolding sometimes in the space. And um, I think that's really normal. It's almost like I remember the first time I ever experienced anything like that when I was like a teenager, I went to live at this Buddhist retreat center in Colorado for a summer. And it was like, like, great. But it was like, I remember being like, Oh, my God, there's so much drama here, like between people and relationships and like things that would be unfolding. And I remember being like, so strange, you know, but um when you have people that like deliberately step onto a spiritual path, of course they're going to be met with all of these lessons and, um, and like catalysts for spiritual growth. Right. And so, and people often that are on a spiritual path, like consciously seeking information, truth, like deliberately trying to get, get somewhere often or like be better or do better, like whatever it is are like, more judgmental and I'm speaking about myself even like judging myself more harshly judging circumstances more harshly um not everybody some people are much more of a go with the flow personality type than me but like you're gonna run into personalities like wherever you are and so of course like if you open a spiritual business you're just gonna have the same lessons that life would give you no matter which path you went down, but they may be intensified. This is just my opinion, or I suppose my my observation like so far, but I don't see that as being like uh, um, something surprising anymore. I'm just like, of course, it makes so much sense that that it would be intense. Well, and it would be more intense, right? You know, because if you're asking for, it's like if somebody holds a piece of mold of it, they might have their life be more intense, but like, I don't know, like if you're playing a video game, you don't want to keep on playing the same level over and over again. You want to go to the next level, right? Mm -hmm. And the next level (laughs) often is more difficult. Like that's part of the game. If it was just simpler, you would be so bored, you wouldn't want to play it anymore, right? So you, you, if you're committed to growth, just like in a video game, every level is more challenging or like, you know, it's it is the friction that creates the movement and if you're committed and you say if there's all of the spiritual energy pouring in and if lessons and soul development is a byproduct of spiritual growth right and you say okay let me turn on the escalator and maybe four things that would normally hit me in a lifetime hit me in one month, right? And then the next six lifetimes come to me in the next one year, right? It's almost like you're doing this invitation for growth, right? And I think anybody that worked there or was part of it signed up for that on some level. And we were this house where it was just so much energy. Um, I remember... I used to go to these uh, healing retreats every year, and I went for like seven years, and we do this meditation and all the stuff. It would be like a, like four days of meditation, morning to night, like sometimes 12 hours, right? So when you come back, you're like this ball of like things. And the masters would always warn us and say, you know, when you come and you go, and you go back home and you're around people, your energy is so clean but also so big and magnified that you're going to dislodge things from and stir things up in people everywhere you go so won't don't be a, a surprise if where you go and even when you're at the grocery store or this you irritate people right but it's not you irritating them it's that this ear these seeds of irritation and this uneasiness of energy starts to dislodge from them being around that energy vibration that's so heightened right and i think that that was liberate the store right you know like i think like the energy with the ohms and the crystal floor and it was just like this higher like level so like it, it just emanated these problems, let's just say, but were they problems or were they growth opportunities? It's all about perception, you know, and it's how you look at it. And if you're challenged, at least that's the way I look at it. And if you look at that in like, let's say not a spiritual world, like, I, I don't know, an athlete hires a coach to push them. And it's when they're like in so much pain and discomfort that they actually improve their game. 
they're just lifting a weight or running like casually. They're they're not making any improvements. They're keeping a status quo. But if they push yourself to the point where ah, like they improve, right? And I feel like that was our state. Ah! <laughs> we were the moldavite of crystal stores. Oh, yeah, at least internally through our that. growth. Maybe not from everybody's perception from the outside, but yeah. We grew. We yeah. stretched. Okay. Does anyone, before I like launch in Ellie, did you have anything like point that you wanted to make? I was going to ask what your favorite memory is, or it doesn't have to be fa- favorite. It could be like most interesting memory from Liberate Hollywood oh. or just oh. anything that's coming up. Oh my God. I don't know. I guess like interesting, weird, me- memorable. Yeah, there's so many memorable things, but I think one of the best things is just like ending your quote unquote shift. Like when you're like, okay, I'm off the clock. I'm just going to go upstairs and like sit in that living room for just a second and vibe. And you just go up there. Everybody's sitting over there. They're having like powwows. They're talking. Angel's playing the guitar. You know, you have other practitioners talking to each other. Um, Christina's like, you want some cacao? You know what I mean? Like, it's just the sense of, uh, that's probably my favorite things to remember. Just like the sense of family and just like, we all, even though it was really crazy, we all liked being there because we were all together. So it's like, Mm -hmm. at least you're here to see this shit. I'm not crazy. This is really happening (laughs) and we're together and we're just doing it together, you know? Um, oh my God. Yeah. I don't know. Never a dull moment. Uh-huh. What's your favorite or one of the, your standout memories that you can talk about? Because there are, let's just say also, there are a lot of things we cannot and will not <laughs> like share publicly. <laughs> let's just be real. But yeah. Public and private uh, teetering as we decided to. And you Easy. guys didn't, you didn't go to the, the, you two didn't go, but a lot of the other people went. We did this uh, staff bonding night lock-in of uh, plant medicine. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't go. go. Yeah, but that was like, it was just, it was just, you know, all the personalities of everybody, of course, and and the different experiences. But, you know, um, then, uh, you know, I would say that. I don't just a lot of the people that would come through and pass through um, all of the different personalities, all of the different teachers. And it was and the people. The people were the best, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, there were some weird things that happened there. Like I still remember the saint of in Italy that came through and he hawked up a crystal that crystal spinner. Yes, that was allegedly made by him, you know, and gave it to me. And, you know, who knows, you know, but it's this like little crystal egg and that came from inside of him. Either he swallowed it or it got made. Oh and, and and so, I mean, I was just like, wow, OK, you know, like, but you met interesting people like that all the time, you know, mm-hmm. and and just, yeah, it was never a dull moment and it always gave a chance to expand from somebody else's perspective and somebody else's belief system even though we're practicing spiritualism um there's so many different facets to it and so many different healing modalities ways um different opinions and and rituals and i think that that was the biggest thing is that we got to meet all of these cool people um, I got to do a lot of really cool conversations and podcasts, but um, yeah, there's some weird stuff that would happen. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah. And like something for everyone, right? Because, you know, like, well, things have obviously the world's gotten like as intense, the world has intensified the last year and a half as well. Um, but before, um, the pandemic and everything. Uh, I, I feel like there wasn't as as much division or um, around spiritual topics necessarily as there there may be now. Um, but you know, so if somebody was explaining or describing something that you hadn't experienced, you might not be as 
you know, there was more openness. There was less like, um, yeah, there, cause there was, there was, we didn't preach, like nobody was preaching any particular dogma or saying you have to believe this or you have to believe that it was more like an offering of there's room for everybody seeking spiritually. And some people are going to resonate more with a particular modality or a particular um, teaching or path or something. And we just kind of have offered all of that and continue to, um, but yeah. And what about you for magical? Well, what's yours? I think like um, the standout, a lot of what you guys shared, the standout moments for me that are like, like the positive ones are just walking in there and walking up the rainbow stairs and being like, this is where I work every day. And like, I also I'm from like, you know, I'm from like small town Canada, like, um, so it's just, even though I'd lived in the States for like almost 20 years, you know, before I got to, you know, whatever. So it wasn't like big cities were new to me or anything. I came from New York before I got to LA, but it was just still, there was still, I, I never quite got over, like, I can't believe I'm here. Like, I can't believe this, like, pinch me, you know? Um, and so I, I just like recognized and I felt like I always sort of appreciated just the environment that I got to work in and be in all the time and how rare that was. And um, yeah, just how rare that was. And then like among other, like all the other memories of just like, in, you know, when, when we're, we're employees there too, right? So we have like the regular stresses of work of trying to do a good job and like get things done. And I remember like New Year's Eve that we had, which was like so wonderful, but it was so intense. Like we, it was like sold out and there was like all these people it was the first time we'd done it. And we were just running around like chickens with our heads cut off, like trying to get everything done. I remember I was supposed to go home. And, and I picked up the catering, but nothing was done completely. And so I went to drop it off. And then um, I, I went to I drop it off and it parked in the red by the fire extinguisher. And the dogs were in the car and I'm unloading everything. And then I was like, ah, and I ended up like running around like a chicken, never went home, ended up leaving my car in the red. Luckily, uh, grace of god it never got towed or a ticket on new year's eve and i ended up being there for like six hours the dogs ended up coming in after a little bit because and, yeah. and like just joining in the new year's but it was just like oh my god i was gonna bring them home and come back and walk back because i live walking distance from there and i didn't want to deal with the cars and stuff and 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 i never made it home <laughs> Oh my god! And the chicken truck that used to be parked out front. Oh, the like, chicken truck! We got in a war with the chicken truck. Oh my god! War, actual war with the chicken truck. And then we're just oh kidding. God. We be but the cool thing is, like, we became like, friends at the end. Yeah, we ended up being okay with them. But like, one of the practitioners like took it upon themselves to like have like this you need to go thing and then there was a screaming match with it and then i mean like the chicken truck uh but it would block our door and it would make all this noise and it smelled like fried chicken and we we're like and then they started using our address as like their address for like uber eats and sh stuff you know i was like yeah hey you guys aren't related to us you can get to just roll up the street a little bit you know roll up the clack street. clack that's so funny though. Like um, there, a lot of the friction that ensued and of course, like not everything, you know, is meant to survive, <laughs> but there's, there's a lot of stuff that actually repaired itself and resolved like in surprisingly miraculous ways, like relationships that um, came through some like rough edges that, that repaired over time as well. And like people, that came through and have come back around and it's like amazing to see sort of like um new iterations of yeah like just people that have worked worked for liberate in the past and been in the fam and like always come back around you know and it's not always like through through conflict or anything like that i don't mean like but even like angelo who we love like he always comes back around i'm like <laughs> yeah. he's just like someone that's like always been around liberate and he like travels for a bunch of years and then he comes back and he's like in and out and like you always welcome him and people you always welcome people with open arms like you always um so yeah there's always something for people to do if they want to kind of come back into the fold like you're um open and you kind of 
you keep that you preserve that sort of family space like almost like a mama that you can run back to <laughs> like it's really amazing um so i just want to acknowledge you for that too because i think that's really beautiful oh thank yeah. you mm-hmm. well you know we're all we're all just floating around on this weird ball flying <laughs> rock yeah it's literally like <laughs> in a space that's just getting more infinite with time literally mm-hmm. expanding well, I think that's probably a good place to wrap up as we expand and we have this new iteration of ourselves through Liberate Sherman Oaks. And, you know, one of the things that I wanted to say is almost like Rebecca was like, like on the forefront of seeing where the world was going before, you know, she was the one that was really driving all of our meditations and some of our classes to be live streamed. So when everything got shut down in a moment notice, right, you know, I think we were given like a day notice, right? Um, (laughs) um, (laughs) And, but we had an infrastructure already in place that we could start doing these, you know, some of our classes and our meditations remotely. Mm-hmm. So, look at you. You were you were the psychic in the future. But and then Zoom came and saved the world. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Zoom. And and you know, so I think that we're gonna keep on moving into more remote stuff, more changes on that, and seeing how we can continue to grow within our two locations and maybe others to go. But yeah, we have all of our friends and family and we hope that who's ever listening you become part of our friends and family and our community because we're really just all about you moving forward in your life Um, there is no no one way to do that just like the analogy of the redwoods the ocean or the desert this it's just a path where however you can allow yourself to maneuver it but we're here to help you have the perception to know that it's okay to always move forward. Yeah, and that it's not always perfectly smooth and that's okay too, because you know that just propels us forward into new places we might not have ever gotten otherwise. Like Liberate um, Sherman Oaks wouldn't exist if Hollywood hadn't existed. So yeah, we'll just see what happens next. Come visit well, us. It probably wouldn't have existed if Hollywood would have still existed. Yeah, you know, that too. All right, everybody. If you like this conversation, you know what to do. (laughs) Like, subscribe, share, comment, all of those good cheesy things that everybody always says. But I want you to know that it is really a thing. It helps the content be seen by more people, have more of an impact. So if you could take, take 10 seconds of your time, do a thumbs up in the comment section, uh, subscribe and share. Um, it literally makes all the difference in the algorithms. So thank you so much. Till next time, have a beautiful day. Ooh, and sorry, call to action. Can you, can you guys let us know what your favorite memory is? If you ever came to liberate Hollywood, like we just love to see that in the comments, like your favorite yeah. standout memory of that. All right. Thanks, everyone. Much Thank love. you. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. I'm Christina, founder of Liberate. This is our mascots, Miss Piggy and Mr. Chew. Liberate is like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory for spirituality. You might wonder what the heck that is. And so basically it liberate is a place of sheer magic, activating and reigniting that magic into you so that you can live your fullest potential and most fulfilled life. When you walk through the door, you're going to see magic everywhere you look. You look down and you see a crystal floor made with over 10,000 pounds of crystals. You say that's a lot, but I know I laid them and had to do numerous trips to the crystal store to buy more and more crystals. There's all of these beautiful, magical gemstones that are activating and creating healing from the beneath and the surface. 
You see the tree of life when you first walk in. You go upstairs and every room has its custom sacred geometry mural in it. And then you notice that each of the rooms are labeled with different uh, names of deities or archangels from different traditions and, and religions from all over the world. This is liberate. Liberate is a space of union. Liberate is a space of creativity. Liberate is a space of expansion. And we're here to help heal you, transform, and help you rediscover yourself.